four, and Dave's up first. So, what have you got to tell us about time travel and misery? <laughs> um, well, there's a lot of both in this. In fact, my fact is on the man that could not time travel. But isn't that every man, Dave? It sounds a bit stupid, doesn't it? <clears throat> so, this is a case study I found about a man referred only as KC. He had been uh, in a motorcycle crash in 1981, and that left him with amnesia and diffuse brain damage. What makes this case so interesting is the regions of the brain affected by this, um, that were partially damaged, were the hippocampus and the temporal lobes which effectively means that he has fine motor skills, reasoning, communication, and can still do tons of activities just the way he did just before, like chess or playing the organ. However, he cannot make new memories and he can't recall old ones. For example, he, he says, when asked, when prompted, how he felt about his um, brother's funeral, said he felt sad about it, but can't recall that he had a brother. Okay. So the emotional sections of the brain are still lighting up, but his actual recall of having a brother doesn't exist. So like 90% of this guy is purely on the spot thinking and reactionary, but you couldn't tell that he's been in a devastating crash. Hmm. But this the the temporal lobe also is heavily um, involved in our ability to plan and decide and figure out what path of option and uh, such to take. So with this damage, he also can't develop any concepts of what he's going to do in a couple of minutes or couple of days or next year or for the rest of his life so he is a man stuck in time because he can't recall any data from the past and he can't project any data from the future he's literally living in the moment so he is the man that cannot time travel that's really cool yeah well, cool does not divide that with you well I mean no, it's, no, it's a really him, interesting concept it's, it's an in, yeah it's a it's sad for him, but it's an interesting case study. I can tell you, he sounds like kind of the ultimate soldier. Because he has no memories. He's got no... He's got an emotional response to things. So presumably if he learns an emotional response, as we would say to something negative, having like something, someone getting shot, or if he was taught to follow directions by a certain means... Essentially, you could, if you could replicate that kind of thing, you could replicate someone who has no issues following any commands or anything like that, except the ones that they would believe to no, be emotionally but, wrong. Well, no, well, well, that's that's the factor. Apart from what you're suggesting is incredibly messy. Just oh no, right, incredibly. I'm not saying let, it's a good let, idea. Let, let, and mass mass out. crew. Uh, it's also a incredibly immoral army because of people to just jump on this motorcycle and drive at that car. And when you crash, we'll test your brainwaves afterwards. No, no, no. Um, what I'm saying is, at a certain uh, point, we'll get to a certain 2009 level. 2009 didn't work. No, <laughs> but no, no, no. But if you could replicate those results in in a in a subject, let's assume someone again who has volunteered, etc. Maybe you know for whatever reason that that is a potential. It's, it just sounds something incredibly. You Orwellian. Think, you, you, you think it could Orwellian. be used. Hmm. Um, I don't think... No, I don't think it could or should be used. No, I, I, I didn't say sh should. I said could. And these are two it, hypotheticals. It, okay. It's yeah. very if, if he can, Well, no. His, his shit is that he can't remember. He also can't get drunk. Due to he can't brain get damage. Drunk. He can't get drunk. He has lost his memory due to brain damage. Yeah. Which is it's a like bit, good... S s yeah, severe areas of the hippocampus. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very sorry to hear about this guy. Mm. And uh, yeah, let's not make them super soldiers by studying his brain. No. For what it's worth, 
he has quite a high quality of life because he reacts the same way as me and you do. You know, we we are experiencing <coughs> in the moment. Mm. But whereas you're thinking about tomorrow or what happened before, he doesn't. So his in the moment, he's probably happier than either of us. I was going to say, yeah, because essentially for all the negative emotions, like the ones that really screw you up, you tend to have to have like a memory or a consistent thing to actually have that kind of main negative emotion. So you can eat a bad burger or whatever and feel a bit shit for a while, mm. but that's going to be very low compared to the emotional sadness that you might feel, say, if your guinea pig died or oh, anything I mean, happened. I mean, fed your kitten to a polar bear. You fed your kitten to a polar bear. <laughs> Any of these things. His brother died and he couldn't remember his brother dying. So he remembers that he was sad. Yeah, but he but only when prompted. Not, yeah, he does not experience the sadness. He remembers that he was, which is a big thing. So, yeah. yeah, a huge relief right off your right off your back. All that, that shit said, I done. suppose you can also not have the positive things that you would also have from a prolonged memory, say, you know, a relationship or marriage or all that kind of stuff. And unless you already had it prior to, in which case you wouldn't remember it, but then you, when you were reminded of it, you'd have the happy associations. Oh, that's fair. Interesting. Cool. Anyway, I'm going to wrap that one up. My fact is next, and it's about Laura's age. Aww. So I was talking to your mum before the show... Uh, and Laura, you may be surprised to know that you are in fact at least 54. What? I know, it's astounding, isn't it? We're actually, uh, it's, it, I'll go through the whole fact before I do the whole everything else. But um, So your mum is sold that she was born in 1962 slash 1963, based on my maths of how old she told me she was when she had you and how old you just turned. My mum's birthday was 1962. And she gave birth to you in later years. We're not going to quote her, just to keep personal information personal. But yeah, she gave birth to you at, at a certain some age. Point. She, she certainly gave birth. And you to are you. now a certain age. So I've added these ages together to come to the conclusion that she was born in 1962, as she apparently was, which is great. Um, but the egg cell that was then to become you was actually present at the birth of your mother. So you're at least 54. I don't know what point they form within small child, fetal, so I can't say exactly how old you are. You may, It's maybe up to nine months on top of that. But obviously, well, not up to nine months, but at some point. When when the, uh, the, the fetus develops its cells of regeneration, that is how old you are. So this means that you're at least 54, and that I'm even older than you, even though we're the same age, because my mum was born before that. And I've no idea how old your mum is, but I'm going to say some kind of joke about she was friends with Leonardo da Vinci. Damn. My mother's actually quite young. Ah. So you're. this is why you're the baby of the group. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm certainly older than you, with your pinching of my cheeks, so put you over my knee, you, you young whippersnapper. Neither one of you have wished Well, hang on. How old are you? 28. 28. So how old is your mum? To be honest, I'm adopted, so I don't really know. Uh-huh. But I believe that she's in her late 40s. She had okay. my sister when she was, I think, 18, which would have put me at 21. Hmm. So she is actually younger, in you're younger in terms of yeah. cell age than Laura. Yeah. Because you would have been fertilised earlier. Yeah. Despite being older than you. Hmm. So, Laura, what's your fact? Firstly, I'm going to get my mum on you for calling my mum old. Your mum told me. I, I was talking to your mum to get her age. That's I, I, I know, but she didn't know that you were going to broadcast the fact that by me being 54 makes me old, therefore she's old. No, no, she's also 54. I'm well aware, but you're yeah. inferring that's old. I'm not. I'm, it's full, I'm inferring it's old for someone of your age. The extra nine months. That's what he was just talking about. No, no, no. I, I, no, I, no, no, no. The nine months of um, mothers. 
Yeah, yeah, because yeah, 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 I have. Okay. For, you mean for Laura's gestation? Mm. Yes. Anyway, You're Laura, you have a fact for us about uh... women's children earlier. Woo! <laughs> oh yes, my favourite subject. Well, actually, it's about how it's not women's genitalia. So, Fail. Dave, you're a pussy. <laughs> However, that insult... Does not imply that he is literally a vagina. He is, has no bearing whatsoever in regards Damn. to it being about female genitalia. Because it comes from the name... Uh-huh. Oh, it comes from the... Uh, many people think that pussy is a diminutive of... I'm going to pronounce this wrong now. Oh, just give it a go. Pusillanimous. Pusillanimous. Okay. It's a diminutive of pusillanimous, um, which is a word to mean it's showing a lack of courage or determination, being timid. And as such, that's why calling someone a pussy is to be a coward. I think the word that you have in your head when you call someone a pussy... I mean, if you're inferring that someone is... If you think that pussy means vagina and you call someone a pussy, then you're actually calling them a vagina, regardless of where the word actually comes from. This is, this Stop is, being a dick. Well, no, I'm... I'm I, I see. <laughs> <that. laughs> the word animus, which means uh, to be overly bald or forthright. Uh, to be annoying and in the way most of the time. <laughs> yeah, that is a dick down to a T. Um, That's a very quick response, though. I'm totally accurate. <laughs> Um, but no, th- 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 this is the point I was going to make, is that language, universal language doesn't tend to matter. If you say your version of banana actually means banana, but 99% of the people go, well, banana means banana. Yeah. It's like it when people use the N word or the C word, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, these are actually, it doesn't matter. Whether or not what what is being said is what is interpreted or not, it's the fact that it is interpreted. No, I, I get as what such. you mean. It's sort of a bit like the thing that I recently read, various bits and pieces that I recently read, where it's a student and he asks his teacher, "Can I use a pencil?" And the teacher turns around and was like, "Well, yes, you can use a pencil. It's completely up to you whether you can hold a pencil and use it to write, etc." But what, that's not what you're asking. What you're asking is for permission to use a pencil. So the question is may. So the English student turns around and sort of goes, yes, but in our day and age, colloquialism is, is, is an accepted term of use, etc. And you completely understood the use in which I was using it. Uh, da, 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 I'm not, I can't remember Ergo, what word for word. Can I use a fucking um, pen? However, <laughs> if you want to be pretentious, uh, may I use a pencil? No, you can't. Budget's been restricted. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I can stab you with this pen. Yeah. <laughs> Whether I will or not is up for debate. <laughs> it's up to your next <laughs> All right, so I think we'll count that as uh, the end to that. So, for round four, are we going with Dave's, not the Doctor? Are we going with mine, deceptively old people? Or Laura's not a cat? I'm going to go with Laura's not a cat, because the origin of words interests me. I have a feline fixation, so the cat's got me. Cool. Laura, who are you going with? Time-travelling man or old people? Um, I resent you calling me old. I just level up. Time-travelling man it is. I'm going to pretend it's Doctor Who. Fantastic. All right, well done, Laura. You win that round. At last.